The previous section was devoted to um, using scientific notation to write uh, really large numbers, or at least that, that's what it was meant to uh, show you. Uh, scientific notation is also used for writing very tiny numbers. Or um, What I mean by a tiny number is a number that is still bigger than zero, but uh, much smaller than the number one. So if this is a number line, this is zero, one, two, three, etc. We're talking about numbers that fall in that area. Bigger than zero, but a lot, big, uh, a lot smaller than one. So scientific notation can also be used to uh, make your life a little easier um, when you're writing those kinds of tiny numbers. Uh, the first example of that type of number is the number 0 0.1. I will tell you that 0 0.1, another way of writing it, is to say that 0 0.1 is the same thing as 1 divided by 10. I'm going to write that also as a fraction. 1 over 10 equals 1 divided by 10 equals 0 0.1. These are all different ways of saying the same number. The way that this is done uh, with an exponent is to write 10 to the negative 1, or 10 to the minus 1 if you want to call it that, 10 to the negative 1 power. That means 1 divided by 10, and there's only one 10 in the denominator. Um, the, the other way of writing that is 10 to the minus 1. And this is sort of getting ready to learn how to use scientific notation to write very tiny numbers. Um, the number 0 0.01, you can test this out on your calculator. Uh, another way of writing 0 0.01 is to call it 1 divided by 100, which is also 1 divided by 10 times 10, because we already said that 10 times 10 is 100. So another way of writing this is 1 divided by 100, is equal to 0 0.01, and that is also equal to 1 divided by 10 times 10. Now, I will ask you, in this representation that I'm circling, how many tens are in the, in the denominator? There are two tens, two tens multiplied against each other, so the uh, fancy mathematical way of writing that is to write 10 to the negative 2, because there are two tens in the denominator, or 10 to the minus 2 power if you want to call it that. So again, you can see uh, where we're going with this. Uh, 0 0.01 and 0 0.1, they're both uh, tiny numbers. They fall in this area of the number line, and instead of writing 0.1 and 0 0.01, if I wanted to write them in scientific notation, if I wanted to write 0 0.01 in scientific notation, I would write it as 1, oops, write it as 1 times 10 to the negative 2 power. Again, when you write in scientific notation, the form has to be some number called the coefficient times 10 to the some other number, and that number is called the exponent. And so 0 0.01, I could write it in scientific notation as 1 times 10 to the negative 2 power. Then you can get to even smaller numbers, and this is this is the point where scientific notation uh, starts to become useful because it saves you a little bit of time. How do I write point zero 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 one in scientific notation? If you want to break that apart, it is one divided by a whole bunch of tens multiplied against each other. I think that is one, two, three, four, five, six tens in the denominator. So I could write it like this: one, ten times ten times ten times 10, times 10, times 10. Uh, that's six tens, so the way I would write it is 10 to the negative 6 power. If I wanted to be formal and write it in scientific notation, I would write 1 times 10 to the negative 6 power. So um, eventually these numbers can get so small that it's actually worth your while to write them in scientific notation instead of writing out all of these zeros um, and, and all of those digits in your number. So keep that in mind. And we're actually going to use numbers in this course that do get that small and possibly even smaller. So let's see, 1 times 10 to the negative 6 is the way of writing that number in scientific notation. Um, the recipe that I showed you in the previous video works here as well. If you want to write this number in scientific notation, we have to write some number times 10 to the some other number. This is called the coefficient. And the way that we have to do it is we have to take a decimal, see my decimal? 
there it is it's a very cute decimal and we need to put it somewhere in this number somewhere over here so that we turn our number into a number between 1 and 10 so I have a whole bunch of places I can a whole bunch of options I could put it here I could put it here here right a whole bunch of different places where should I put it well hopefully you will agree that the place that it should go to turn our number into a number between 1 and 10 is it should go right here and that's about the only place that I can put it so this is going to be the new decimal place or the new decimal I should say and our coefficient is going to be the old number but with the new decimal so here's the old number new decimal this is going to be a 1 and then the exponent that's the second number exponent is going to be is going to be the number of hops in between digits that it takes to go from the new one to the old decimal this is a little bit different because this time the old decimal was actually written down and you can see it there it is it's there for everybody to see and I want to know how many hops it takes between digits to go from the new one to the old one it takes one two three four five but this time it's five backwards and because it's backwards what I want us to do so I want us to say that this is going to be negative 5. So instead of writing point zero 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 one uh, that way, I could write it as 1 times 10 to the negative 5 power. Um, and that's just the scientific notation way of writing that number. So again, hopefully you can appreciate that this recipe works for very big numbers. It also works for very small numbers and pretty much anything in between. Here's another example. We have to write something times 10 to the something else. We've got our decimal. Uh, oops, let's go back. Where should it go? Should it go here? There. Where is it going to go? Now, I'm sure everybody is screaming the correct answer. The new decimal should go there. Because if I do that, then I am going to make a number between 1 and 10. And so this new number goes here. It's going to be 1.23. And this is the new decimal. And where's the old decimal? There's the old decimal. So if we want to figure out the exponent, we have to count the number of hops it takes to go from the new one to the old one. One, two, three. Three hops backwards, so this is going to be a negative three. So if I wanted to write the number zero 0.00123 in scientific notation, I would write it as 1.23 times 10 to the negative 3 power. That's just um, how you would do it, and the recipe should work all the time. Um, I had another point that I wanted to make, and now it's slipping my mind. Uh, I, I'm going to give you a maybe moderately challenging question at the moment, and you can work on it on your own, but we're going to work on it on this slide. How would you write the number 6 in scientific notation? Now, um, you might be scratching your head saying, you know, that's weird. Why would I b want to write the number six in scientific notation? Most people in their right minds would never want to write the number six in scientific notation. But I want you to pause the video and try it, um, mostly because it is a good test of whether you understand the rules for doing this. So pause the video now. You can unpause it when you think you have it, and then I'll work through it. All right, here's me working through it. Um, we want to write, we're starting with the number 6. There it is. We want to write it in scientific notation, so it has to be something times 10 to the something else. The first thing we're going to do is write the coefficient. I don't know why. Coefficient. There. The stylus kind of stinks at the moment. Okay, what was the rule? We had to take a decimal place. There's our beautiful, lovely decimal place, or decimal point. And we had to put it somewhere on our number, and there's our number, um, so that we turn that number into a number between 1 and 10. So, do I put it over here? Hell no. Do I put it over here? You bet your something I do. There it goes. That's where the new decimal goes. And I'm going to write 
big, nice letters. New. That's our new decimal. So what's the coefficient going to be over here? It's going to be 6. So, which is a little weird, right? We haven't really changed anything, but that's why this is a tricky problem. The second part is we want to find the exponent. And I told you the exponent is the number of hops it takes to go from the new decimal to the old decimal. Well, we wrote down the new decimal. Where was the old decimal before we started messing with our number? Um, the old decimal was in the exact same spot. The old decimal was there as well. So the new decimal and the old decimal are the same. So the question is, to get the exponent, you have to count the number of hops to go from the new one to the old one. How many hops does it take? It doesn't take any. It takes zero hops. So what goes up here is a zero. And so the proper way of writing the number 6 in scientific notation is to write 6 times 10 to the zero power. Like I said, almost no one in their right mind would ever write the number 6 in this way, but it's a decent test of whether you are following the rules correctly. So um, if it doesn't make sense, maybe play it through again. Uh, those of you who've taken um, some fancier math classes, you may know that 10 to the 0, that's a 0 there, is another way of saying that equals 1. 10 to the 0 is just another way of saying the number 1. And so instead of 6 times 10 to the 0, I could say 6 times 1. And 6 times 1 is 6. So we got our original number back. So um, 6 times 10 to the 0, again, is just a fancy way of saying 6 times 1. Um, it's the scientific notation way of saying that. Uh, here's another point that I want to make. Um, I think that many of you have a calculator that looks like a complicated trillion dollar device that can do a lot of different things that you will never have to be able to do. Um, what you are going to have to be able to do, however, is you're going to have to be able to use your calculator to do scientific notation. The problem is that everyone has a slightly different calculator that does scientific notation in a slightly different way. So, if you are having difficulty um, punching numbers into your calculator using scientific notation and doing calculations with scientific notation and your calculator, you have to email me, call me, send up some smoke signals, send a telegram, um, have somebody parachute into my house, um, and let me know, and I will try to help you figure out how to use your calculator to do this. All right, here's a summary of scientific notation. Just in case uh, your eyes haven't glazed over yet, scientific notation is a way of writing big numbers and small numbers compactly. That's basically what it's for. What I want you to be able to do is I want you to be able to interconvert uh, between sort of the standard way that we write numbers and scientific notation. Uh, backwards and forwards. So if I give you the number 32 million, that 32 million, you have to be able to turn that into scientific notation. Or if I give you 5 times 10 to the 92 power, you need to be able to convert that into standard format. You have to be able to go in both directions. Um, oh, here's maybe a simpler example. If I gave you this number on the left, you better be able to convert it into 2.3 times 10 to the 17. And if I gave you 2.3 times 10 to the 17, you should be able to back convert it. And you're going to have to be able to do this on your calculator because uh, certain calculations are coming that require this because the numbers that we deal with will be too big or too small to just use the all of the uh, digits on your calculator. You're going to have to write them in scientific notation.